Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our work with operations with fractions. And we've already done addition and subtraction with denominators that are the same. And today we're going to go ahead and look at some multiplication and some division. We are going to be dividing and multiplying fractions by whole numbers. So let's start with multiplication. So I'm going to take one fourth times two. Okay, so here's one fourth one time. Here's one fourth two times. How many fourths do I have? Two. Yeah, that's right. It equals two fourths. So I'm gonna grab some paper so that I can write this down. One fourth times two, which equaled one two fourths. And I would trace that. Oopsies, mine moved. I would trace, or if you know, you're know you at home and you don't have hard fraction pieces to trace, you can print and cut them. And that equals two fourths. So these are the two different ways that we can write it. Okay, so let's do another one. How about three fifths times three. Oof. So I'm going to take out a whole handful here of fifths. So I need three fifths three times. So here it is one time, two times, and three times. And to find my answer, I'm going to count how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So I have nine fifths. So I'm going to write that down. I have three fifths times three. And we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We had nine fifths. And you remember from before, we, in the lesson proper and improper fractions and mixed numbers, when the numerator is bigger than the denominator, it's an improper fraction. So when we have an improper fraction, another option we have to do to write the same answer is we can turn it into a mixed number. And this, if you haven't practiced that lesson yet, I'm gonna tell you, you should just stop here, write down the improper fraction, and then go watch that other video, okay? So I'm gonna take my nine fifths and I'm going to see how many whole circles I can make. There's one. Now look at that. Am I able to make another whole circle? No. So I have one whole and how many fifths left over? Four. So I can write it like this. One whole and four fifths. You see how the whole number is the same height as the fraction? You, know, you don't want to write it like this because that kind of looks like 14 fifths. You wanna write it like this to make sure it's nice and clear. Okay, let's go ahead and do another one. Two sevenths times six. That's a pretty big one, isn't it, huh? Well, here I have a whole stack of sevenths in my hand. So I need two sevenths six times, so here's Two sevenths once, two sevenths twice, two sevenths three times, two sevenths four times, two sevenths five times, and two sevenths six times. And let me write down my problem here. We have two sevenths times six. 
So let's take a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12 sevenths. So here we have another fraction where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So we have an improper fraction. So I want to turn this into a mixed number. Let's do that. So I'm going to take all of my sevenths and see how many holes I have. And don't mix these up because remember these are part of the problem that we made. Okay. You definitely don't want to mix those up. Ooh. So here's one hole. And we have, let's see if we can make another one. I don't think we're going to be able to make another one. Nope. Look at that. So we have one hole and one, two, three, four, five sevenths left over. So one hole and five sevenths. Cool. So I want you to go ahead and practice this. You know, when you have that material in front of you and you can actually take out the right number of sevenths or fifths or thirds or eighths or whatever it is that you're multiplying, it makes it pretty darn easy to just see how many you have all together. And then if you're on the step of making mixed numbers, you can practice that. Again, remember, you don't have to turn it into a mixed number if you're not ready to yet. You can stick with the improper fractions. That's absolutely fine. Okay. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and look at division. Okay, so division can sometimes get a little bit trickier, but let's take a look here. If I did three fifths divided by three, I'm gonna put that here, three fifths, divided by three. Let me show you how I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my green Skittles. I'm going to lay them out so you can see them really easily. So the number of Skittles I have or coins, you know, maybe some of your printed stamps, it, it truly doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be Skittles. It just has to be, you know, something that you can share your fifths out to. And I'm going to take my three fifths and I'm gonna distribute them to each of my Skittles. Now remember, it has to be fair, right? So this Skittle gets one, and this Skittle gets one, and this Skittle gets one. And there, I've used all of my fifths, and I've shared them out, and is it fair? Did every Skittle get the same amount? Yeah, yeah, they did. So we're done dividing. Now we need to find our answer. So. If you remember, when we want to find our answer, we always have to look at the at one unit's place, okay? We want to know how many each Skittle got. Did each Skittle get three? No, we had three all together. Each individual Skittle got one-fifth. So I'm going to write that. Three-fifths divided by three equals one-fifth. There we go. Let's take a look at another one. And I want to do one half divided by two. So let's write that down. One half divided by two. So what this problem is saying is we need to take this one half and we need to share it between these two Skittles. Now, is there something that is equivalent to one half that would equal two pieces. Well, let's see. Ah, two fourths is equivalent to one half. So we could exchange this one half for these two fourths and then we can share them out equally. So one Skittle got how many fourths? One. Each Skittle got one fourth. So the answer is one fourth. Let's do another one. Let's stick with our half example. This time we're going to do one half divided by 
1 half divided by 3. Okay, there we go. Let's write that down. So this says I need to take this 1 half and we need to share it between these three pieces and they have to be equal. So that means I need to turn this half into three equal pieces. Well, what would be three pieces that's equivalent to one half? I've got that fraction equivalence now. Three sixths. Three sixths is equivalent to one half. So I can exchange this half for these three sixths, and then I can share them out. So how much did one Skittle get? Got one sixth, okay, cool. I'm gonna do one more for you. I'm gonna make it a little bit more tricksy pants. One third divided by two. So we have to ask ourselves, we need to split this one third in half so that we can Share it to these two. So you gotta think about your fraction equivalence. What's equivalent to one third? We know that three ninths is equivalent. And we know that two sixths is equivalent. Those are the two things that are equivalent in our material. Now we know it can't be ninths because it wouldn't be fair, right? We can't do anything with this. But with sixths, we can exchange for two sixths, and then it's fair and equal. So one third divided by two equals, how much did one Skittle get? One sixth. Oh, look at that. Got the same answer twice in a row. Okay, so that's division. It's probably pretty obvious to you right now that you really need to have a very strong handle on your fraction equivalence to be able to do most division problems. So if you're rusty on that, I recommend that you super practice it, come back and then practice your division. So that's it for this lesson. We did multiplication and division. I want you to practice these. And then what I encourage you to do is make up a whole bunch of problems, all four operations, mix them all up and put them on a piece of paper. So you have practice paying attention to which operation you're working on. If you mix them all up, you have to make sure you're paying close attention to what you should be doing. It's really easy to do like 15 multiplication problems in a row and then move on to a different operation and accidentally keep doing multiplication. So I want you to make up problems too after you practice this really well. And I want you to practice paying attention to which operation you're doing. And you can do that with any of the math work that you've been working on. Okay, guys, that is all that I've got for you. If you have any questions, reach out, and I think you're just great. All right, bye.